Well, now that school's in session, it's time to start thinking about bus safety. And to tell us all about it is Corporal Robin Michaelove of the Buncombe County Sheriff's Office Crime Prevention Unit. Thanks for joining us, Robin. Thank you for having me. So tell us, what should kids know about being safe on the bus? In particular, when kids are heading out to the bus stop, they need to get there at least five to ten minutes early before they know their scheduled bus time, the bus pickup time. And as the bus approaches, they need to stay on the side of the road, be cognizant, uh, look around, make sure there are no vehicles anywhere around, wait till the bus comes to a complete stop, wait till the bus stop arm is activated, the red lights are blinking, the door opens, and then that's when they can enter the bus. They need to make eye contact with the bus driver, make sure that the bus driver sees them get on, and move back to their either assigned seat or just a seat on the bus. Because from growing up riding the bus, we always rough house around the bus stop and everything absolutely. and run around a little bit, but you're saying it's probably best, it is absolutely best to stay on the sidewalk, stay out of the street. That is absolutely right. Stay off of the right of way of the road, back far enough, probably 10 feet or so, back onto the, in the grass or on the sidewalk at the corner. In your driveway, stand back and just be cognizant of what's going around you. Be quiet, wait silently, just rest. Get some rest before you get on the bus. Contemplate your day. There's no sense in running around and putting yourself in harm's way. Now you said 10 feet away from the bus and that's known as the danger zone. And why is that a danger zone for kids? If the closer that you get to the bus, it's, very, it's much more difficult for the bus driver to see you. Um, we don't yet have surveillance cameras on, on the outside of the buses like some jurisdictions do, some school systems do. So you have to be cognizant yourself of what's going on around you. So stay out of the driver's blind spot at least 10 feet. Okay. And when kids are actually riding on the bus to school, um, I used to rough house on the bus. Kids will, will do that. Um, will. What, are, what are some tips that parents should tell their kids when they get on the bus? Make sure to express to your, your child how important it is. You know, school buses don't always have seat belts on them. The bus seats are designed, uh, there's padding on the seat itself, on the seat back, which is designed to keep your child safe. But your child needs to know that once they sit on the seat, they need to sit with their feet on the floor and as far back in the seat as they can. Some little kids, their feet don't touch the floor, but they need to sit as far back into the seat as they can, put their back up against the seat, and sit quietly, not a lot of movement. Don't pull yourself up on the back of the seat to see your friend in the front. Don't shoot spitballs. Don't shoot spitballs, <laughs> and don't turn around, talk to the folks on the side of the aisle beside you or behind you. Just sit with your um, feet on the floor facing forward. Because if the bus ever gets in an accident, I mean, they're pretty well built. If, they, they if a are. bus hits another car, the bus is going to win, but still it's going to cause a, a huge jerk inside and you have to be in the right position. Absolutely, absolutely. You might want to um, encourage your child to take their backpack off once they get inside the bus. Take their backpack off and set it at their feet on the floor so that they do have access to put their back completely against the Plus seat Plus they back. won't hit a bunch of kids walking absolutely, between the aisles. Absolutely, absolutely. Cause some more problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for kids we have it covered, but what about for drivers near buses? Now that school's back in session, people have to be more weary of buses going by. And what are some Absolutely. of the rules of the road with buses? It's, it's extremely important. Buses have a set route. They usually are within minutes of picking up at different stops. So as a driver, just be aware of that fact and know that you're going to have to change your plans accordingly. You might have to leave a few minutes early in the morning to allow yourself to get safe passage through your route without encountering a, a school bus. If you do encounter a school bus, make sure that you're at least three to five car lengths back from the school bus. There's no sense in rushing when you are behind a school bus and the school bus engages its yellow lights. It's just like a yellow warning light at a traffic stop. It means to slow down, not speed up and try to pass the bus. So when the yellow lights are engaged, slow your speed, come to a complete stop behind the bus, whatever travel lane you're in, behind the bus, and wait patiently as those children are, are um, loaded or unloaded off the bus. There's no, no reason 
to rush to pass a school bus. There's no excuse whatsoever. And it's it's not only the worst thing you can do if you get caught for it Absolutely. with points of driver's license and the fines and everything, but it puts kids in danger, obviously. But yes. what, are, what are some of the rules if, because I didn't know this, where if you have a two-lane road, obviously you have to stop if you're coming from the other direction, but at what point don't you have to? Okay, very good question. And I had to research this to make sure that I was telling you right, but if you, the only time that you do not have to stop when a bus is stopped with its stop arm engaged, the red lights blinking, is when you have a physical barrier between the two travel lanes. Does a median count as a physical barrier? A median counts as a physical barrier. Okay. Uh, a concrete barrier, a median. If you have four lanes of travel, including a turning lane, that also counts as a barrier. Okay. So if you, it, and that's doesn't apply if it's a two lane road with a center turning lane, both sides must still stop. Yeah. It only applies if it's a four lane center turning lane. And that's not something to make people complacent about driving around buses. If you see a bus exactly. stop and there's like a little median there, you can't still go 80 past it. You have to be weary of it and slow down. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just a, a good, good practice regardless. Great. And if people want more information about bus safety, where can they go? For more information, visit NorthCarolinaBusSafety.org. All right. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you very much for having me.